I know you're a big Kobe fan, mm -hmm. but just talk about that moment being able to play in an all-star game mm -hmm. with Kobe being Bryant. What was that like and what happened? It was, bro, it was the dopest, the dopest shit ever because it was, this was Kobe's last all-star game. Yeah. And to be a part of that was like, for me being a Kobe fan, it was like, it's, this is a, a hell of a send off. You know what I mean? To play in the last all star game that he's going to be a part of, to be an all star, like to share this with him, be a part of like the festivities, like everything about that all star weekend was just surreal to me, right? In my head, it's like, all right, like this is an opportunity to like fucking go, go get it. You know what I mean? Be the, the, the scoring leader. Right, you were going off that game. I and I was getting busy, bro. I was getting busy this game crazy i didn't initially start it off to where like all right like i'm gonna go get it i'm gonna go get it but as the game is going i start making shots and then now i'm in rhythm and i'm like it's time right so i remember i remember like i probably had like maybe eight to ten points i got subbed out and so now this is the time and i think i was a, i was a starter i was a starter uh, this all-star weekend too, which was another reason why it was just dope. I was an all-star starter, got voted in. And so this is now my second stint to go back into the game. And me and Kobe meet at the scores table. Oh. And I'm like, I'm geeking. Like, you know what I mean? Like we're both at the scoring table. The yeah. game's going on. Like in my mind, it was like, damn, like, like they could play all day. Like, like fuck, I'm, we can chill day. right here, me and you. You taking pictures of me. Yeah. And, and so... I'm talking to him and I'm like, Cole, I think I'm going for it. And we laughed about it. And he's like, yeah, that's how it starts. You make the first couple baskets, you know, it's your night. And he's like, go get it. Go for it. So I'm like, bet. <laughs> so we go back into the game and I'm, I'm like, any chance I get the ball, bro, it's going up and I'm hitting. I got like, you know, it was climbing 20 something, 30 something. 41. Now I'm getting double teamed. Like, I remember Russ and KD start double teaming. They were hating, bro. Hating. I'm like, bro, they're playing. They were really playing defense. They were really playing defense, like, yeah, bro. Dude, like, let, and, let, let, him, and, let my guy have his shine. And I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't gonna fight it. Like at, at this point, it's like, all right, I'm trying to, I'm trying to win more than be the scoring right, MVP right. of the game. Like I'm trying to win this shit. We, we, we going, we doing this. Let's go win it. But the story, like that whole story of like getting that, that moment to meet Kobe half court, share that moment. And for, you know, obviously the, the passing of him, like it just always is a special bonding moment that I had with him. You know what I mean? Because he was the reason, like, all right, Kobe, like, that's that's how Kobe looks at this. Like, all right, I'm about to try to go get the scoring record then. Like, I'm feeling like, good. I'm like, I got this. his blessing on it. Like, <laughs> let's go get it. And, uh, yeah, it was it's, – it's cool telling that story just because of the backstory. Right, right. right. Talk to us about your first time, like, meeting Cole. I think my first time meeting him was, um, I was 15, 15 years old, 16 years old, at the Kobe camp. That's when he had, you know, remember when everybody had their own little camp? Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's been a picture that, that's that been floating out there when we was at his camp, and I was sitting front row. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you see Clay in the second row, but we was, like, literally, like, locked in to everything he was saying. Mm -hmm. And from that moment, like, being at his camp, I didn't realize he knew who who I was. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it started by a little conversation, do this, do this. Next thing you know, it's all right, I'm hooping, I'm having this open run, come to this. Next thing it it, it turns into like, yo, I'm in the gym, let's do this. You need to do this. You know what I mean? It started yeah. to slowly turn into a whole different type of relationship that was just came from the respect of me, just, you know, being an athlete, really paying attention to everything he said. And, mm -hmm. you know, by the time I was senior in high school, 
next thing you know, you know, I'm I'm getting his shoes personally. Mm-hmm. He's giving me his shoes, like, you know, playing these. Next thing you know, I'm going to SC and it's like, yo, I'm going to sponsor y'all to to wear Kobe's. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I remember you made the special Kobe 4s for us to wear. You know what I mean? It's like it started from then. That's you dope. know, just the respect of me just paying attention to him, asking him questions, whatever I needed. He was always there no matter what it was. You know what I mean? And it, it all started from high school and it just carried on after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. I mean, a lot of people like even the reason I wore 10 – was because of the Olympic coat. Olympic coat. Okay. That was why I wore number ten. Okay. You know what I mean? And I, I remember telling him that, like, you know, I'm gonna wear number ten. You know, everybody was wearing eight or twenty four. Right. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna wear, I'm gonna wear ten. That was my Olympic number. Uh, his Olympic number. I didn't that's know why, that. Yeah. I'm, that's why I, I wore ten, bro. I'm thinking it was just cause, like, and it made perfect sense. Nah. Comp ten. Nah, yeah. <laughs> you wear ten. <laughs> I flipped it. To yeah. That, okay. You know what I mean? Okay. But it really stemmed from cold, you know, Olympic number. Okay. You know Hey, that's deep. I learned something new on that. Hey, that's deep. P always telling us how he got uh, elbowed by Kobe. What's one of your uh, vivid memories playing against Kobe? So my whole career, I always wore Kobe's. And I remember it was it was a time I played against Vince Carter earlier in my career. And he was like, man, you you wear those when you play versus Kobe? I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, I'm like, Fucking, I ain't wearing them next time I'm playing Kobe. Yeah. Just, you know what I mean? He ain't about to have no <laughs> mental edge on me. So I remember wearing some Jordan 10s. We walked out on the court. He looked at me and said, the fuck you got on your feet? <laughs> I said, <laughs> he just shook his head at me. End up killing us. Right? <laughs> Story. You can the look this shit up. You, yes, you can look it up. You can look it up, bro. He ended up tearing our ass up. I remember he had the game winning shot, but before the game winning shot, I think we just hit a shot, put us up by one. They called a timeout. He walked past and said, You know, you know y'all left me too much time, right? <laughs> Came out, hit the game winning shot. Swear to God, hit the game winning shot. Walking off the court, he said, Yeah, don't wear them shits ever again. <laughs> I've never put on a pair of Jordans again. And then, yeah, again. That's, that's dope. That's so dope. Never played, played, never played, in, played, played in Jordan. Never played ever in again. another pair of Jordans again. <laughs> wow. True story. You looking up. You playing Kobe's? That's Still? all I wear. Right now? That's okay. all, yeah. That's all I wear. But it was a relationship and a respect from Kobe to where he started to, you know, give me the opportunity to be able to wear and design my own PEs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and that just started from the respect and, and the love and, the, um, you know, our relationship. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, like I said. I That's know, so dope. Yeah. All, the, all the NBA players that wear Kobe shoes, yeah. like they make sure like uh, – of uh, Devin book. book, yeah, yeah. So it's it's more way more, but I, yeah. I like that. that yeah, they do it was that. so dope. You know what I mean? And it was it was a respect thing that he he had too, where he started because it was it started with like five of us was able to do the whole Kobe thing. You know what I mean? And and you know you just see it start expanding more just mm-hmm. with the respect of you know guys looking up to him. Mm-hmm. Did Kobe ever teach you a special move? Footwork. He just always taught me how to pay attention to details when it comes to footwork. You know, he was always adamant on me about everything to do with footwork. And it's so crazy because even when I used to ask him a question, he used to take offense to it, right? Like, what the fuck do you mean? You ain't figured it out yet? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it got to a point where, like, man, let me make sure I I master this shit first before I ask him anything else. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? But the footwork thing all came from him without doubt. Yeah, I got a a crazy Kobe story. Uh, When we was playing Portland in the playoffs – and I had just had my shoulders op- or or not operated yet. I had just had my shoulders. Uh, I had got shot up to play because, you know, both my shoulders was fucked up. So I wasn't playing for like, you know, a week or two before the playoffs started just to, to let the medicine, you know, start to work and shit like that. But I'm like, I'm nervous going into the series because I ain't played basketball in two weeks and now we about to start the playoffs. So. I sent Kobe uh, a a bunch of edits um, on like, and, and no, I actually think we played a couple games. So I sent him some of the edits from the Portland game and he hit me back. Like, hold on. I'm in the movies with my daughter. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a watch these clips and I'm gonna get back to you. So I'm, I'm thinking like, Oh, no way this nigga gonna get back to me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sure enough, bro. Like three hours later, he, he, he gets back to me and like, literally a paragraph detailed out on what I need to do 
when they come for the double, do this. Always look at the big, like follow the big man. Play a little, like he was going down in mm-hmm. details on yeah. all the shit I should do. I still got the-, the I am about to say, do you still got I still got to save, Make absolutely. Make a shirt of that, monkey. Absolutely. <laughs> and so I go into the game and that was all that was on my mind, the shit that he was telling me to do. Bro, sure enough, the game was just easy. Like wow. the game, I, no bullshit. The game was easy. I was seeing the defense. I'm getting to my spots. I'm I'm reading where the big is coming. Like everything that I was telling him, I was having trouble with. The game was just like this now, and uh, like it it just for me, I had gotten to that point finally. Like you had the relationship you know, early on, mm-hmm. but I feel like I was, that's where I was going towards with right, the relationship right. with Kobe. I was, you know, starting to, you know, uh, he invited me to, you know, his, you know, camp that he was doing in the summers. Um, and it was just a, a, you know, a relationship we were starting to have through text, through talk on the phone. Like he was starting to take me in and, you know, I say that to say, you know, it sucked to, to have that short yeah. and, you know, not, not be able to, to, you know, have him. Yeah as a resource again but yeah shout out shout out to the bean man Kobe Bryant it was easy for you to kind of see you know his talent but could you kind of walk us through that workout you know you stopped the workout early then you were able to trade for him could you give us any <clears throat> insight on that workout and what you saw in kobe yeah, what what wowed you there well i think the you know i think the one thing and you remember he did not play basketball here in the states until he got to high school mm-hmm. he went to italy with his father professional player and when he went over there he was you know he all of a sudden he becomes a linguist oh you think he spoke at least three languages mm-hmm. And it's a different lifestyle over there, completely different. And when he came back here, all of a sudden, he had been playing against all these kids over there. Mm -hmm. And he was unbelievably skilled. His work ethic, second to none. Uh, He wasn't afraid of anything. And it was genuine. It's Mm -hmm. not verbiage. Right. I saw a film on him. Eventually, Arn Tellum, who uh, who was an agent here in town, now he runs a Pistons, um, he was his – Joe, his dad, was his – Arn was Arn Tellum was Joe's dad's agent. Mm-hmm. And so Kobe started hanging around here in this country, and all of a sudden, you know, people were shouting out at him, you're going to – you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, thought New Jersey was going to draft him. And Arn told him he can't play back here. Now, here's an agent's influence. And he said he can't play back here. And why can't he play back here? We don't want him to play with all this pressure around here. Mm-hmm. Gets in the draft. I offered him. I offered the first ten pick in the draft for Vlade Divac, who was a very good center mm-hmm. and someone you want to play with. And everyone thought there was something wrong with him. Um, so one through thirteen, they passed on him during the draft. I talked to these people for. Three weeks. It was almost like begging them because the big prize in the deal, we thought we might have a chance to sign Shaquille O'Neal, never knowing that we would get him. And well, so when we got them, Paul, it was, it was a, like a twofold message you're sending. First of all, it was about improving your team greatly. And then the financial wherewithal changed the dynamics to this franchise. And Jerry Buss, the late Jerry Buss, who was the owner of the Lakers, he he had a different seating arrangement that's still in place in this league. Different prices to see different players. That's where all this stuff started with him when we got those two. But it was like, uh, to watch him work out, it was like ridiculous, okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, he was like a man, he was like a man playing against – kindergarten people that's mm-hmm. how advanced he was mm-hmm. and he was he was versatile he was versatile but he was a furious ferocious defender he was that's all he did he wanted to compete mm-hmm. he went down to, we were going to training camp uh, his first training camp he you cannot sign a contract here in los angeles unless you're 18 years old it has to do with uh, movie, the movie industry, and right. and so he couldn't even sign a contract. 
And he would tell me, I said, what are you doing this week? You know, I'm going to go play ball here. I said, hey, I said, Kobe, why don't you do this indoors? Don't go out. <laughs> Get a call from a trainer. He'd broken his wrist playing down at Venice Beach. So he missed training camp. You go over in training camp, you watch him, and it's like, you, you almost felt you had to strap him down. He, <laughs> he could not sit down. <laughs> yeah. Could not. <laughs> and so he had a chance to develop his left hand over there. Okay. Um, but he was just one of those guys that, again, size, you two guys stand side by side, you might be a touch taller or pretty close. Mm -hmm. But he just he was just a natural player who, um, when he was born, there was a heck of a lot of gold dust sprinkled on this. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. A lot of gold dust. And he did not disappoint. He played every night. You didn't have to ask him to play hard. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. Uh -oh. That's just what he brought. Um, rest in peace to to the great Kobe Bryant. What's a story from Kobe that you'll always cherish? You know, there's a lot of things that went on in his life that, that I don't feel comfortable talking about. And I think the thing that made me feel like there was a real trust here with him, when I was working in Memphis, I'd get calls. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And, you know... I guess in some sense that might have been tampering. I didn't look at tampering because he was he was at our house all the time. He ate at my house all the time. I felt more like a, a father figure with him. And we'd talk about it and started talking about things. And I said, well, Kobe, I said, look. I said, first of all, you know, you put yourself in jeopardy here, okay? You have to look at yourself first. Don't blame anyone else. Exactly. But look, look, look what you need to do a little bit better. And... So it became more and more of a trust issue. He became a free agent, okay? And he called me. And his agent then was Rob Palenka. And so I met them in Orange County in a hotel room. And he said he wanted to come to Memphis and play mm, basketball. Really? That's great. And I looked at him, I said, <laughs> Never. you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, no. And I said, Kobe, no, no. Uh, you know, it's just, you belong somewhere out here, mm -hmm. okay? You belong somewhere out here. And even though he would have never played there, I just wanted to reassure him that don't feel like you have any obligation with me or the Grizzlies to play here. And because he would have never played there, it wasn't going to happen. And I, I just got to know him that well, and, you know, we would – we would communicate a little bit, not a lot, because I, I do believe in sanctuary of a contract. And um, it's just someone that I really like personally. But he would, he got to be tough, okay? Very diff difficult. Yeah. And I remember one day uh, he wanted to ch challenge Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> and I'm, I said, are you crazy or not? I said, this big dude no, <laughs> going to eat you. Leave him alone. <laughs> leave this big dude alone. But I had a wonderful relationship with him. Forget it. Forget it as a basketball player. Mm. I love what he stood for, his commitment to excellence, uh, his commitment to not be afraid to go up there and lead. He wasn't afraid of failing. Once you get afraid of failing, you're going to fail. Mm-hmm. He was not afraid. Mm -hmm. mm, once you get afraid of failure. I love that. Well, that's awesome. I like this yeah. tattoo. I want <laughs> yeah. tattoo right there. Once, once you're afraid, once to, you're afraid fail, to fail, you, fail, you will, will fail. fail. You will fail. I like that. I just want to follow up on on Kobe to Memphis. There was a, there was a slight possibility Kobe would have went to Memphis because we hear about him no, possibly he, looking he, at he, Chicago. I just don't think that that would have happened because you had to look at his life. He was different. He was going to be more successful outside of basketball, okay? He had a – it's almost mentally had a script in his mind that this is what I'm going to do. And he was gifted in a lot of areas, okay? It wasn't, you know, physically obviously off the charts. Yeah. But mentally he was gifted. Yeah. And he had took this incredible interest in women. Uh, he was going to make a difference in a lot of those kids' lives. Mm -hmm. And he was just uniquely different um, – as I say, I wonder where, you know, where his, what would have been, what would have been the highlight of his life as a player? Mm -hmm. And more importantly, when he walked away from the game. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what 
it's it's so tough to to understand or come to grips to is with how he approached basketball, just how he was going to approach life in that, that next phase. Like, you right. know, uh, I was looking for it as a fan and, you know, <clears throat> as a little brother to his, I became really close to him right. uh, the, the year of his passing. So, you know, I was all into what's next. Like, what are you going to do next? And you, you saw the short stories and him publishing books. And Remember where you were the day he died? Oscar. Mm-hmm. I do. I do. It was in Orlando. I was sitting in my house in Los Angeles. And I was reading the Sunday newspaper, sitting, it was a rainy, kind of a rainy overcast day, not a lot, just drizzly. And I did a call and said, did you hear about this helicopter crash? I said, no. I said, helicopter crash? Yeah. Well, we think it's Kobe Bryant's helicopter he flies in. I said, oh, my God, he wouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. Well, that evening, um, I was pretty worn out. I really was. It was like, no, this can't happen. Mm -hmm. And if you've gone that way, it's if they were just five minutes, nothing. Right. Nothing. Right. And, you know, the the ugly parts of it that came out, the lawsuits, my God, it's so tragic. How can he even want to bring it up again? Right. Um, but it was uh, in my house, um, in a family room. We have a, I have a bowl there, and there's a picture of him with Gianna on the sideline of a Laker game. She got her head on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Now, that's been there since he's passed away. Mm-hmm. And there's little things around my house that – uh, most people would look at and they would say, no, I, you don't. Why would you keep that around? Mm-hmm. Because I believe in people. And I particularly believed in him when, you know, we get him here, showboat, uh, never forget, uh, in the playoffs, we're playing Utah. No one else would even look. We were awful. No one else would even take a shot. He wasn't afraid. Didn't make him. Somebody said to me, that's just absolutely awful. It wasn't funny at all. Mm-hmm. I said, watch what happens next year. Great. Mm-hmm. I said, watch what happens next year. Mm-hmm. But he was, you know, he, he was just, just too, wired different. too easy to yeah. mess in it. Too easy. Yeah. Too easy. My welcome to the league. Well, it was training camp. That was one. Okay. We were running. Um, I probably said the first time Cole cussed me out. Oh, what did he say? How did this happen? Man, training camp. Tell- Asshole, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what did was it Cole- like? Was it like looking back at it? Was it a was it an asshole move or was it like, nah, this is him? No, nah, it wasn't at all. It wasn't at all because it, it pushed me, bro. Because uh, I remember when it was it was preseason and we in a locker room and shout out to Nick Young, bro. And, <laughs> yeah. One of my vets, so you can imagine. Like, oh Lord, what I was going through. But uh, yeah, Nick. I think maybe it was maybe another teammate, maybe like Jay Hill, Jordan Hill, or I don't remember who it was. We were in the locker room talking, and uh, somebody had told me something about Col- what Kobe had said in the media, and I was like, "Bro, Kobe say this or whatever." And me, we, me and Nick, somebody was we talking, and then Kobe come in. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Nick, bro, he like, "Hey, Kobe, you said that." <laughs> da, 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 da. And Kobe was like. What like so we having this whole conversation? He was like, I don't even remember what he said, bro. Yeah. In the convo, I just remember he ended it with, "Take your ass out there and shoot some jump shots <laughs> with your broke ass jump shot, motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it was. And I was hurt. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is my eye off yeah. hurt. <laughs> and sure enough, that's what I went out there and did. <laughs> I went out there. It's exactly what I did, but like it was crazy, man, because I was still learning how to shoot the ball. And, uh, <laughs> and, and oh, at the end of the training shit. camp, and like at every practice, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm like, bro, I'm putting in the work. I'm like, man, I'm shoot these jumpers, dog, <laughs> whatever it was. And I started making some jumpers, and he like, see, he was like, that's a little bit of hard work. That's what it, that's what it is, huh? Okay. You see, you see, so it's some tough. You see, love. yeah, you see what it is. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, but in the moment, yeah, it hurt. Yeah, it <laughs> it's funny. Hurt. Uh, Roy would tell this story to me about Cole, uh, Roy Hibbert, and Cole had broke Roy's nose. <laughs> so year, you know, Roy was wearing a mask, and it came from an elbow from Cole. And uh, it was funny when he was telling me it. He he asked Cole like, "Yo, Cole, like," and, and when he went to Cole, it was like a little kid, like thinking Cole was gonna be like, "Oh no, my bad. I'm sorry, I did that." Like, so he like, "Cole, hey, yo, you broke my nose, man." <laughs> Cole yeah. said, "Stone face." He said, "You should have got the fuck out the way." Then. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was him, like, bro. Yo, damn, yo, like <laughs> that was him, bro. That was him. He was that like, was, "Dog, I thought he was gonna at least apologize." It was times where we'd be waiting on the plane. And I remember one time we were waiting on the plane, bro. It was like an hour. And the plane ain't leaving without Cole. Yeah. And he get there. And like everybody. Will like, tell everybody, the story. Everybody happy he getting on the plane, right? But we being sarcastic. <laughs> we like, hey, like, Cole, welcome. <laughs> and he was like, man, y'all motherfuckers better be glad I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and then sat down <laughs> and say nothing the whole fight. Yeah, no, Lou, Lou would tell us the story. When bro, we had bro, him, Lou would tell us the story, That's bro. how he was, bro. Oh, that's bro. how he was. You Literally say nothing too far. plane. And then they'll hear the helicopter coming in. And he'll land. Yeah. And the helicopter might be 50 feet, bro. They got the golf cart, bought a helicopter <laughs> to golf him <laughs> to the plane. And then he'll walk on the plane. Yeah. Man, shout out all to Black Bean. Shades, all that. You know how Bean, bro. <laughs> were, were you in the practice with the um, the Charmin? Were you Soft in that the practice? Charmin practice? Yeah. I wasn't in the practice. Okay, okay. But, but you was there that day? Yeah. What, what, like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, that we day. don't get one Kobe story uh, explained. We gotta, we gotta get to the bottom of how a, this shit happened. I was a rookie, so my leg was broke. <laughs> so I wasn't soft that day. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Had some mercy. But I'm in uh, the, that day. Yeah, was charming. Yeah. So I'm in the training room. I'm getting my, my rehab and stuff. And all I hear is, Soft as charm, y'all motherfuckers trash. Yeah. Like, just going crazy. You know, Cole got a deep ass voice, so like you hear it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he just going back and forth. And I hear Nick, you can't guard me. Like, oh, you can't guard me. You can't guard. All that, right? <laughs> so I just hear the back and forth, right? And then all I remember is like, I'm like, man, what's going on? Like my first year in the NBA was a shock, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing everything, <laughs> right? So I'm like, man, what's going on? And uh all I hear is what uh, Mitch was like, or Mitch Kupchak was our GM at the time, and Cole leaving the court. And he like, Mitch, I'm supposed to get better with this shit. I'm supposed to be get better with this shit. <laughs> and then he walk in the locker room. He like, Jew, what the fuck is this, Jew? What the fuck? He's like, I'm supposed to practice? He's like, these motherfuckers making me worse. <laughs> 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 and he just walked out, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, bro. I'm like, damn. I'm seeing this. I'm like, damn. Yeah, like and what you say? Everybody, that, you, you know what say? He just... dap me up. I'm like, yeah, they make you worse. Come here. They make you, they make you worse. And everybody just, you know, slow by one by one. Everybody start walking to the locker room. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was a day for sure. Yeah. So we 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 you you explain both sides of it. Him being that fierce competitor, and then him, you know, being that mentor. Um, I got to know both sides. I had my experience being you know, a competitor against him. Um, but then as he retired um, and then later in my <laughs> career, I really got to connect with him on on like a little bro, big bro uh, type relationship where I can call him up, I can text him. Um, I went down to his camp that summer when he did his, you know, Kobe elite shit where he was teaching the wings and the guards footwork and, mm -hmm. you know, just expanding our game. Like that's that, that was the beautiful part that he was getting to was helping the next generation. When it came to you, did you get more of that mentor side or did you get more of that just him not necessarily being an asshole, but him more so trying to mold you to 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 take that next step? You know what I mean? Like from a pushing you, you know, type of thing. Yeah, I got both. Like you said, I got both. Yeah. Um, he was the first person that texted me like when I got drafted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it was like, all right you know, let's, let's get better. Let's do this or whatever it was. Uh, but I got both, man. I, I remember driving out to, to Newport four o'clock in the morning just to do defensive <laughs> slides, bro. Like for two hours. you up to Newport to do defensive slides. Right. It was the first time in my life I ever did a workout and we just did straight defense bro, yeah. for two hours, bro. 
<laughs> like, but that's crazy. how that's bro, how that's how his mind yeah. operates. He like, no, nah, you don't. You can't slide this way. Yeah, like, you can't do a defense slide. You got to do this. Your feet got to be like this. Your yeah. hand like. Do you think a little bit of that was was to like test you? No, I think that's really what this. <laughs> you think he was <laughs> <bro>? <laughs> <laughs> flies? Yeah, no, I yeah, think this no. is really what he was. He was doing. He was on his way out doing this. Yeah, you know what I mean. But um. Like, so I got that aspect of him, but I got to know him as a human being too, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, it was, it was tough love, but it was, it was stuff that pushed me and I still carry to this day. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like, as a person, bro, like he loved his family, man. Like loved his family, love, love V. Um, and you got to see that softer side of you, but like of him, but like he was a person that really didn't want to, want to show no weakness. Show that shit, huh? Yeah. You know I mean, he didn't show no weakness, but yeah. like if you sit down and, and talk to him, he was an open book. You can ask him anything. He yeah. was an open book. That's, and, that's, he gonna, and he was a student. At the heart of who he was, he was a student, bro. So, like, how we talk about, like, watching film and figuring it out, uh, that's who he was. Mm -hmm. So, like, he would – and they, I remember in that time, he would break down stuff to me. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Like, it make no, no – it didn't make sense to me at all. Mm -hmm. But, like, as my career went on, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. that's what it – that's what you meant. That's yeah. what you meant. And that's what I, that's what I got a lot of from Yeah. Speaking of Kobe, you brought up, mm -hmm. you know, being a fan and growing up in this, in, in our generation, our era of basketball, being in SoCal and you get to watch him up close and personal. Mm -hmm. Like what, what's your favorite or best moment playing <clears throat> against Kobe? Uh, definitely the first time I played against him. Like there's not many dudes in the league who, mm -hmm. when you're a rookie, will make you starstruck. And mm -hmm. that was one of them. I was just like, I can't believe I'm lining up against you, bro. I've watched, I've watched your whole career. Like when you won the slam dunk contest, when you, Went for 80, seen you win five chips, and mm -hmm. now I'm guarding you. And, like, you go so much harder right? when you guard guys like that. And I'm right. like, wow, he sees the best every night. Every night. Like, he's seeing the Rajah Bell trying to kill him and freaking um, Bruce Bowen undercutting him. Those are the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just – and that was me. I was trying to not let him get a good shot off. And that was, like, such a beautiful moment for my – I had a good game at the time, too. I was six for eight, 14 points. When you're a rookie, that's like scoring 35, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, nice. I hope Kobe noticed me. I shot it well tonight. I hope he noticed that I, you know, <laughs> do, the, do the damn thing. So that was a really good memory for me, bro, and Staples too. And when I go back and watch that film, the floor spacing so crazy. Two big men on the block, Kobe in the high post. Like now you watch the league, five out. Mm -hmm. you might have Jokic at the top of the key, but now, nah, I mean – who was on the block for Kobe? It was like, who was this? It was Bynum, Powell. Bynum, Powell. It was just a big league back then, yeah. you know? And I'm like, dang, it's, I can't believe I'm out here right now. I just, I love these guys. Yeah. So there, there wasn't like an awe moment? Uh, he and gave us 40. You had to like snap out of it like, oh, shit, hold on. Let me, <laughs> no, let me I was right. in awe the whole time, bro. I was in awe. I was like, man, I'm so happy to be here. Because when you were a rookie, like, the wins and losses – you want to win every night, but they just don't hit the same because you're just like you're just trying to get in the game. Yeah. You're just trying to get some burn, get some shots up, do something good to get noticed. So I was just happy to be out there for real. Like I can't tell you what the score was. I know Kobe had 40, and I had 14. I still felt like I held my own. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did, did Kobe tell you anything about your game that helped you in your career later? He didn't even have to tell me. One time for the uh, NBA Global Games in 2013, I knew I was on the right path. Uh, I can't sleep. That jet lag is crazy. So I go up to the weight room and I'm on the dumbbell bench, whatever. And someone just taps me on the shoulder. I look up. I'm like, oh, damn. It was Kobe, hood on, shades on. And I was like, I can't believe I'm in the same gym in this, man. He just, he just goes, sup. Shakes my hand, just goes to the other side of the gym, starts doing his workout, whatever. And then to hear him tell that same story in 2016 on his retirement tour, like, I remember playing him in the preseason out in China, and I went to go for a workout. It was like 11 o'clock at night. I went in the weight room in the hotel to lift weights, and he was in there by himself lifting lifting weights, <laughs> you know. And so when I see stuff like that, then that's when I know, you know, he's uh, really takes the game seriously. So when I heard him say that. That is uh, all I needed to hear. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, man, I know if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm gonna fulfill my potential, mm -hmm. and that was my favorite memory with Kobe. Uh, it was one word. All he said was "sup," but just to be in, you no, know, I was on that mom mentality in the same hours with him. I was like, 
this is a uh, this is really a dream come true. Like mm -hmm. trying to match your energy, bro. I'll do whatever you do. Maybe not the four thirty a.m. four mile runs right, you'd be right, doing, right. but <laughs> I'll hoop with you anywhere. Like that was just a beautiful memory for myself, being able to see him in his element. That was just, man. You've been seeing him since he's been on you since you was a kid. Yeah, man. Since I That's moved crazy. to SoCal in two thousand four. And this is why I knew my dad really had it. This is why I knew my dad had the respect to people around the league is I went to him with Detroit, me and my little brother. They just lost to the Pistons and we're in the banquet room. Remember the Birmingham Hotel? Yep. 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 We, was in, we was there. All the Pistons fan were outside. Detroit basketball the whole night. Outside of yeah, the like hotel? 5,000 fans just trolling the Lakers. But, oh, right, because yeah. Kobe, asking, yeah. this is 2004. Four, yes. oh, yeah, when they, when, we, when they lost. They just, yeah. And <laughs> we're at the, I'm with my Uncle John. My brother went to sleep. He couldn't hang. I'm with my, <laughs> my dad. And we're just at a table. And of all people to come sit with my dad, it's Kobe. Mm. I'm just like, wow. Mm -hmm. You could be sitting anywhere else. And you came and wanted to sit with my dad and mm -hmm. talk about whatever with him. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. I didn't say a word the whole time because I was like, I can't, I, don't, I can't believe I'm sitting here. I said my Uncle John. My Uncle John was like, my, my, uh, my dad was like, Cole, this is my brother-in-law, John. And my Uncle John just looks up and goes, what's up? And just goes right back to eating. Like, I can't believe this man is on his, chasing his fourth ring and he decides to sit with us. So that was a big, I looked at my dad so differently after that day. I was yeah. like, wow, dad, I can't believe you actually do this. This is yeah. crazy. I knew you played in the league, but I know you were this nice. Like, yeah. you got Cole's respect and, that was that was a great moment for me too. Yeah. That feels great, like it was yesterday. Yeah, now it we does. know. It does. 30 is still here doing it. <laughs> it does. My favorite moment, I think I got the last like I got the win yeah. on him for the last matchup against them. I remember in Indiana. In Indiana. I remember he gave, I was so jealous, bro. He gave you his, his shoes and yeah, everything. I, I was got like, the shoes after we I had a special moment. A pair of Kobe's. Yeah, oh, we had a special moment in the locker room. He came to the locker room after yeah. the game, after everything cooled down. I had to wait like a cool probably hour and a half <laughs> until the game was over. Like yeah. that, his cool down was crazy, but he came over, he chopped it up to me. You know, we laughed, we talked about the game and I was holding that over his head. Like I won that matchup last. <laughs> um, so, and you know, it was just an incredible moment. That game was fire. Yeah. You know, the Lakers travel everywhere. Like they every do. time we played LA, it was like 50-50 fans Damn. in Indiana. Y'all was great back then. And we were good, bro. Yeah. Like we had a, a a hell of a fucking run that year. Contender. And and y'all go seven when games the Lakers came to town, yeah. it was 50-50 fans. That's funny. Crazy. That's what yeah. we do. And he struggled that's that's that whole game. That's what we do. That's what we do. Your daddy know. Yeah, bro. That's funny. He do know. Michael Thompson definitely know. You yeah. wasn't. He, he wasn't. Laker OG, the Lakers you know. weren't good at that time. You weren't repping the Lakers. You weren't repping the Lakers. We always good. fan, huh? We all yeah. fair weather. Fair weather. Fair we, we, weather. We, we he was a Warriors fan good. for a little bit too, I think. Ooh. Yeah. We good when we not. That didn't make me happy when Kobe said that. He's like, who are all these Warrior fans around? I was like, nice. We're doing something right. We got Kobe upset.